What's good, good people? Welcome to Hope Views. Thanks for clicking that thumbnail. My name is Corey, and today we're going to be talking about the best episode of The Mandalorian this season, episode seven. Man, it was really impressive to see. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you feel the same. Question for today's video is, do you think there are any other spots that we're going to find out about in the finale that's coming up next week? This episode was very, very good, and I love the opening of it. We get Jean Carlos Esposito's Moff Gideon coming back doing this thing, being super intimidating, incredibly intellectually superior to everyone around him. Like he does such a great job of making everyone else feel so small and he does it without this physical posturing. He does it just by using his words and his tone of voice and he's incredibly dismissive. He makes everyone else at this little shadow council feel really, really small. And that episode was a great hint at what's been happening the entire season. A lot of people like to say that they feel this season of Mandalorian is directionless and they don't know where things are going. But I feel as though they've been setting the table this entire time. The entire season we've been watching, one, the reconciliation of all the Mandalorians, which we see kind of culminate here in this episode, as well as we've been seeing all the things that had to happen for the First Order to become the First Order. If you know the movies, you know that that last trilogy of films that we just got, starring Ray and Finn and Poe, ending the Skywalker line of films, you would imagine that this First Order just came out of the blue, but this is actually telling you or showing you the building blocks that and the steps that were taken for the First Order to become the First Order that we saw in those movies. I thought that was pretty much on the table. I didn't know for certain how the Doctor episode of Mandalorian played in, but Katie O'Brien's character in that Doctor episode was pivotal in showing us, hey, there are Imperial people that are in place inside the New Republic and the New Republic is being way too forgiving and giving way too much grace to all these former Imperials. That was kind of the point of the episode, but we see it even solidified in future episodes and specifically in this one, when Katie O'Brien shows up and reveals herself to be the spy in which they're talking about here in the episode. Once you get past Moff Gideon and all the spy stuff and the Shadow Council stuff, you get the Mandalorians and you have that tension between the two different factions uniting and they, they seemingly unite on un certain grounds and you don't know how well this alliance is going to play out but eventually you get to the point where things are starting to make sense among all the people participating in that mandalorian faction you have bo katan who's doing her thing trying to be the leader you have mandalorian din Djarin, the star really who is like the supporting role who is also like on the opposite side of the aisle. And then you have all the other key players that we've recognized their faces from other times they've popped up or we've recognized their helmets from other times they've popped up. The action scenes that we see here are just incredible. When they arrive on Mandalore and we get the remnant of the Night Owl faction who is still like surfing on the surface of Mandalore and like they reunite, they regroup. We get to hear the backstory of how Moff Gideon actually obtained the Darksaber and how all that stuff played out. And that leads us to them exploring Mandalore and running across Imperials. And I know I'm kind of speeding through the episode because there are so many other things that took place. Chief among them, the fact that Grogu got a suit and now he's walking around in the little suit saying yes and no, that stuff was hilarious when they first introduced it. But it also served as like a mediation between the two factions and he stepped in as like the, hey, y'all gonna do the right thing type of character in a place where he don't even have words. So that was dope. But moving back into the ending of this episode, we have the huge action sequence of fighting between the Mandalorians and the Imperials. And you get Bo-Katan and her group captured, separated from Din Djarin. And I don't know that character's name, but the guy with the minigun, man, the guy with the minigun did his thing this episode. He went out in heroic fashion. It was a great send off for the character. You just wished and hoped that he could have survived some type of way to come back and do more on the back end. And maybe they maybe they pull some of that uh, MCU fake death stuff where he can come back around and do some things. But if he doesn't, it was a great send off and I enjoyed that last 15, 20 minutes of the episode where they're just worn with Imperials and just, he got that minigun and he just letting that thing rip. I really enjoyed it. I guess my greater question is very simply, about Din Djarin. We saw that he gets captured toward the end of the episode and all I could think to myself was, 
they're gonna have to find some way to get him out because the show is titled The Mandalorian. I know the majority of the season it has felt like The Mandalorians, but this is his show. So at some point he's gonna have to be rescued and I am anxious to see how that unfolds. I wanna know if Grogu's gonna play a part in that because he is capable now, he has the force to reach out and do as well as he has a machine now that'll help him be mobile. So that's cool, that's cool to see him moving around and I wanna see if he'll play a part. I know for certain that Bo-Katan is gonna play a role in that as well as the rest of the Mandalorians. But my, my greater question is the one guy who got away and he flew off to warn the fleet, is he gonna get to them in time before the TIE fighters and the bombers are mobilized and will they be able to have another dogfight episode? As well as who's going to actually be on the ground saving Din Djarin, because that stuff is really, really cool. It's amazing, you know, people would like to talk bad about Disney and the things that they've done with the Star Wars property, but when I think about it, I think that we know on the grand scale that the First Order was always gonna come back around and be a thing, but even though we know they're gonna come back around and become something in this world, we don't know what happens with the Mandalorians. They could very well defeat this small section of Imperials, defeat Mark Gideon, and go on to have a whole separate storyline while that Skywalker saga is being wrapped up inside of the Ray films that we just recently got. Like, we could have a whole nother track of things happening on the backside of that with the Mandalorians in this Ahsoka show that's also coming. So. I know it's all going to tie in together and it's, it seemed like it's coming together quite well. I just want to see it all happen because although I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, you know, I've never seen every single property, never seen Clone Wars, never seen The Bad Batch. I know of the things that are happening and I just want to know how is all of it going to be wrapped up and how are they going to move that Mandalorian and the planet of Mandalore, that group of people away from everything that's happening that we know is going to unfold with Rey and the First Order and Finn and Poe and that trilogy of films but that's my question and that's my concern going forward not like i'm worried about it but i just want to see how it comes to fruition i want to see how it comes to pass those are my thoughts about this episode i think it was a great one i think it was a great one i hope that you feel the same enjoy yourself guard your heart and go watch something good